think Matt, you're probably going to go first. So if I can ask you to uh, kick off uh, today's call, uh, we'd be delighted to hear your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the inter introduction, Claire. Um, just like to say thank you very much for inviting me here to give me the opportunity uh, to be able to speak and to share some of our experience with Inner Source over the last couple of years. Um, I'll give you probably a bit of an introduction to, I guess, who National Australia Bank is. Um, we're 160 years old um, and we've been uh, helping our customers with our money all that time. We're about 30,000 people serving 9 million customers um, from around 800 locations in Australia, New Zealand and uh, many countries around the world. We are Australia's largest business bank. Um, we work with small and medium enterprises and large businesses to help them start, run and grow. Um, we exist primarily to help our customers um, and help our communities prosper. And generally, our business strategy is focused on the investment in our Twin Peaks of colleagues and our customers. Um, by myself, I'm currently engineer manager for uh, NAPCLA Guilds, um, and we're tasked with producing the engineering capability uplift required to transform a 160-year-old bank. Uh, previously being the engineering strategy and DevOps practice lead uh, for NAB as well. And I'm here with um, probably about 25 years worth of open source experience. Um, open source has been through every job I've, I've had in my career. And I'm a very uh, passionate um, believer in principles. Um, uh, particularly also like in helping people uplift engineering craft. Um, everywhere I go, I help development teams be better. Um, very much focused on the, the concept of developer experience and how to help development teams be as, as powerful as they can possibly be. Um, with lots of um, interest experience, um, primarily with an FSI for the last few years, but also um, energy media and a few startups along the way. If you'd like to connect with me, um, I'm available there on LinkedIn as well. Uh, at National Australia Bank, our strategy is kind of based on these aspects of um, being safe in terms of protecting customers and being easy to work with. And we're very much creating a simpler, much more seamless digital bank uh, to use. Uh, we're very strong on relationship-led um, as part of our banking and also kind of internally inside NAP as well. And we're very, kind of very, very passionate about um, building those relationships and helping our community as well. And we look to the long term in terms of the sustainable outcomes and we're looking forward for our customers and for our colleagues internally as well. And I think it's these principles here that have helped, uh, helped us kind of get the launch, the in source initiative, the National Australia Bank. In terms of because we, we have that in, in our DNA in terms of helping our communities prosper as well, and whether those communities are external or internal. But then um, I'm going to take you through today a kind of view of the challenges that we're facing um, with technology engineering and how InnerSource came about and uh, some of the benefits that it shows us as well. Our current transformation started in 2017, um, very much focused on this migration to cloud, um, trying to make, I say, operationally uh, much more resilient, uh, migrating our applications to cloud, and insourcing a lot of the, the capabilities that we had. Um, up to this point, we, uh, as with most banks, a lot of our capability was outsourced to our partners. Um, but as we brought those uh, uh, capabilities back inside the bank, we, we had to train them as well. We had to make sure that they had the right skills um, in order to take advantage of the new possibilities. And part of my, I'm very fortunate enough to run this team called the NavCloud Guild, which has um, over the last few years trained um, over 7,000 people on different forms of cloud and engineering skills. And we're now at that point, probably about halfway through our cloud migration. Um, so we've kind of, we've got the, we've done the low hanging fruit and we're onto the much more challenging workloads. Now, um, a couple of years after we started the transformation, we started the, the formation of our NAV engineering foundations. To simplify our approach to engineering and to really help in that the removing the the, the complicated um, non-value adding aspects of our engineering capability and it was these kind of, these combinations of different uh, the aspects of the cloud migration and then our engine foundations coming together that really gave us the the, the space for the in the source initiative um specifically with the challenges that we're facing you know we were looking to work out how we could reduce the cost of experimentation within the organization. We're also looking at the, with the rapid enablement of cloud, uh, you tend to find in a lot of organizations, what happens in the first phase of this enablement of cloud 
is that teams are empowered to move and to move very, very quickly. And they're given, uh, you know, given the challenges of solving problems as fast as they can. We've been through that part of rapid enablement and we're on to the next phase of maturing that enablement and that experience on cloud. And so we've got to kind of move, take this another shift into these aspects, more standardized components and how can we reduce the unit cost of transaction for every cloud migration? Um, on being a bank, we're very strong on our governance risk and compliance. The um, you know, banks are based on risk, banks understand risk. Um, but within engineering, it's a slightly different uh, concept. And we probably had a bit of a challenge there to work through, you know, how can we work with existing uh, controls within software engineering and from architecture and security around how can we um, get, use open source development techniques internally. And with these introduction of the foundational engineering components uh, across the bank, we really had to work at how a central platform team could build these, these reusable components for hundreds of different development teams in a way that it would work for hundreds of different development teams. And in a source we felt was a, you know, an aspect there to, to had a real potential benefit for us there. But I think one of the, 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 the genesis of inner source came about when we were developing some training for our engineers. Um, I had to get them the, the, for hands-on sessions on cloud and within the concept of the bank as well. Um, we would build out training materials, we built this hands-on workshop, and we would uh, we built a small custom tool that would help us um, integrate into our authentication systems and allow us to automate the calls through to the APIs for cloud. And we would go around uh, each and every single development team and we'd help them set up the development environments and we'd install these, these, these tools onto the, onto the laptops. And we were finding that these tools didn't always work and the environment was, uh, weren't consistent. And so rather than uh, try and spend the best a lot of time in rebuilding the tools, we decided to go look around the organization to see what other tools must exist. Because at this point, there were dozens of teams uh, working on cloud. So we did, we had a look around and what we found was not one, not two, not three, but many versions of the same tool that every single team had uh, built themselves and we're, each were working different languages, um, different levels of support. And it, it was this point where we felt there was a lot of wasted effort in duplication of tooling that InnerSource really had a point to play. And so we launched InnerSource with a nap. Um, I have this definition which I use for it, and I borrowed it um, unashamedly from uh, Martin Woodward from GitHub, and tailors it a little bit for our context. But for me, InnerSource very much plays that aspect of sharing knowledge, skills, and lastly, almost um, application codes across the organization. Um, and so where we did with this is that, you know, we decided for a bank, we need something different. Um, and so we decided to create this operator model uh, within NAB. Now, the concept of operator model is an unusual one, but it's one where we find, you know, it, it worked well for us. Um, it worked well within the, relationships, within the relationships of the bank, and it was well understood by the governance control factors in, inside, and again, like security and architecture. So what we focus on is not so much the development practices of each and every single team, but we work on the interfaces between teams. Um, every team has its own context and its own specialty and it's different. Um, but what we do is we make it easy uh, and simple to understand for the different teams, service teams to work together. And that's where we were found our particular sweet spot was about. Um, within that particular operator model, um, what we've done is we built a network of community champions within the organization. And they kind of form our minimal viable governance within the bank. Um, in this context here, what we have, the, the champion network um, helps us get the, uh, run the community engagement. It helps us do the um, community showcases. And we have a process there where for every new product coming um, into in a source, we do this uh, a showcase where um, the champions go along and we do a review of the, of the product, what's available. Um, we invite in security and architecture. Um, so they have a voice into this process as well. And we ask questions about the, each product coming through. Um, we ask about what problem it's solving and why is this particular product unique and different? Um, you tell us what, you know, um, what its history and how, how it's going to be supported. Um, and we found it kind of, it's a really useful kind of low key entry way into in source um, with a fairly minimal bar of entry. And 
I know there's uh, community workshops. What tends to happen is that there may be some further questions asked and we go back and ask them, um, do some further work on that. Or sometimes we find that there is actually multiple solutions doing the same thing. In that, con in that situation, what we do is uh, we'll form a working group and get the different teams to work together to work out which of the solutions is uh, more capable than others, or if there's a reason why we should have two solutions and we're very clear on how that works. Now, on the other side, uh, working with the bank, we need to have owners. We need to have accountable people for each individual uh, in-source product that we're working with. And so they perform the, the role of code governance um, on each repository. Um, they make sure that the repository meets our minimum standards. They look at what, um, any issues that are raised. They uh, look after their pull request workflow and providing um, support for any contributors into that, uh, uh, into that repository. And so this is um, a kind of fairly informal and fluid kind of community-driven governance model but one where we still have the necessary control points. We still have, you know, an audit trail. We still have um, input from architecture and security. We still have a view on risks, um, but it's still very much an open source type of environment. And one of the, the key things we found is, in the lessons learned is, you know, we found it was important to have distinguished between the two different products. Uh, when we talked about Product being reusable for teams, uh, there was a lot of questions about well, um, who's going to support me? If I take this to, through to production, and I have a critical incident on the customer-based system, who's going to support me? As so we developed this classification between our different in-source products um, of curators and community, and each of these are designed to solve different use cases along the way. So the curated ones um, are very much the I could say the highest quality products. They're the ones which are we know have been proven in production. We know that they've been through all the architectural uh, governance controls. We know that they've been through all the security architecture oversight. We know they've been through the relevant pen testing. And we know that they're uh, rock solid um, products that people can use and there will be uh, no problems taking those through to production in the banking environment. Now, generally these things are obviously, it takes a lot of investment to get there, the high investment products, which means that there are not many of them within the, the portfolio of InnoSource products here now. But you know, they find that they are, it was striking that right balance between uh, letting people contribute in a, a small project that could be useful versus uh, giving the, the buyer awareness of what they were consuming within in source. On the community side, this is where we um, much more focus on the open source and kind of ways of working and make it much easier to start your in source project. Um, and th these ones are typically more around the smaller tooling components um, used within the software delivery lifecycle. And there's much more uh, products on that, on that side. But then um, in source, we talked about standardizing the interface between repositories. Um, so what we do is we spe specify a very small number of metadata files within the Git repos um, that really help uh, people from outside the development team understand how to get involved in um, different repositories. So here we talk about the different lists. It's only a small handful of files. So we're very lightweight and we just really focus on the interface between different teams. So at any point here, you'll know who owns a code. Um, if you need to ask someone a question, you can find them. If you want to make a contribution, you know the best way to format and structure that contribution to give the best chance of being accepted. You understand what the behaviors are expected within the team. And most importantly of all, you understand what the project is and you understand what problem it's solving. Um, and where it's useful and perhaps the use cases where it's not best used for. The, the call on the issue templates and pull request templates is also it helps build a consistent user experience within in a source for developers. So to give you an idea um, of where we've, um, some of the other things we've learned and some of the benefits we've seen along the way, um, we probably see the things fall into these um, five different areas here. Collaboration, openness, precipitation, and transparency. Collaboration, we know that you know, when you write code in the open, uh, you tend to find that there's, the code tends to be slightly better, better quality. Um, we've really seen that the aspect here is that we can remove some of the bottlenecks in the organization. We can know that you know, if a team needs an, is dependent upon another team to deliver a, a feature, uh, but that isn't prioritized, then we can, we can, in the source, can help that work through. 
We can see um, it works with all platform development, um, particularly along uh, technology driven platforms. Uh, we find this source works well there. We know that, you know, we've seen the discoverability is something which is key to making uh, inner source work. Um, and cutting through some of the noise and creating a, a clear source of truth about reusable um, aspects of engineering. And particularly the reuse of intellectual property across domains, uh, across business domains is proving very useful. Probably the, um, the biggest benefit has been through some of the learning and mentorship we get through InnoSource, because we get the situation where senior engineers are often working with junior engineers across different teams. And this is, you know, to me, InnoSource is not a technology solution, it's a, it's, a, it's a people initiative. And this is where we see the real benefits here is, you know, people are able to gain experience from people outside of their local team. And they're able to get this ability to cross skill, um, uh, you know, from front end to back end perhaps as well. And with the transparency around products, we find that there's more openness to discussion and we enable more diversity of thought, um, which again leads to more high performing teams. And with the metrics, we look at things like people collaborating, product reuse, um, operational health of repositories. Um, with the kind of, with the, to me, we've been at this probably for about a year and a half, two years, and I think we're only just starting. I think we still have a long way to go. Um, and where we're looking at is where can we inner source business platforms, um, which are much more complex to do than technology driven platforms. The business platforms have a lot more complexity. Um, looking at automating the metrics, and we're doing some work with GitHub on that one. Um, improving the discoverability with uh, our own portion of a inner source discovery portal, and a lot more community building internally. We have, you know, a good, good number of hundreds of engineers collaborating in the source. I'd like to see several thousand engineers collaborating on the source. And just to wrap up with, um, to anyone here, I'd say one of the biggest benefits and the greatest helps to get us started was InnoSource Commons. Um, it was fantastic. And our first version of InnoSource pretty much took a lot of what was in InnoSource Commons and then replayed it internally for us. So thank you very much for your time. And I'll hand back to you. Thank you so much, Matt. That was a great presentation. It's 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 so fantastic to see all the, the particular challenges and even solutions that you have come up with that yes. are specific to that kind of large enterprise, those large enterprise challenges that we know some some organizations have. So thank you so much. So next, I would like to invite Wilhelm to the stage to share his presentation. And um, so we'll we'll hear from Matt very shortly in the future. And um, but Wilhelm, if you would like to turn on your camera. Uh, and I can turn off mine, uh, but you can you can kick off and, and welcome and welcome to everyone who joined in the in the interim as well. Off you go, Will. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it's my honor to be here to share my uh, story, my all in the source journey of Huawei. Um, we call it uh, in the source uh, two point uh, building the community around the in the source project. Um, uh, my name is William Jiang. I'm an open source uh, expert in Huawei. And I'm also a member of uh, Apti Software Foundation. Uh, now I'm a mentor of uh, Huawei Inner Source uh, Foundation to help the projects to know how to run the pro projects in an open source way. Um, Inner Source 1.0 uh, in Huawei, uh, we initiated Inner Source um, pilot project since. 2014, uh, our attainments um, are switching from S1 to uh, Git. Uh, there's uh, about 5,000 project repo are hosting our internal uh, culture uh, platform so everyone can see the code. Um, we open up about 1 billion lines of code, but, but unfortunately, it, <laughs> It's really hard to uh, build a uh, collaborative uh, environment. Uh, some developers said they were too tired to maintain the project by themselves uh, because few people want to devote their time uh, on this inner source project. Um, so we need to find a way to convince more people to join us. And uh, it, it, it's take uh, some time. And, uh, before we move to inner source 2.0, I uh, let's take a look at the definition of the inner source uh, from the Wikipedia. Uh, inner source is, uh, is use of open source software developed best practice and establish uh, of uh, open source like culture within the 
organization. Um, so in this way, uh, we, we, we need to learn a lot from the open source first. And uh, um, for our inner source 1.0, um, I just find a few people have the chance to work with the open source community. And uh, uh, let's see uh, what the open source community can give us. Um, the open source way is uh, characterized by openness, uh, transparency, uh, collaboration, uh, and, and uh, I can see um, there's a peer review and meritocracy. These features are best present in the open source community. As the open source community uh, is a group of people interacting and uh, sharing ideas, code, and documentations uh, while working together virtually on um, the open source software as uh, developer user, uh, developers, users, evangelists, and marketers, uh, salesperson, or even investors. The people of the community also share the knowledge through uh, unofficial, uh, unofficial mentoring or uh, peer reviewing. Uh, we can see the man and the knowledge is, uh, <coughs> is produced by a mentor and consumed by many. The knowledge is passed uh, in a, a sync way uh, in the open source world. And <coughs> so, uh, so we started in the source 2.0 uh, last year, and uh, it's may uh, it's mainly focused on the uh, community side. Uh, as Apache way, aka and uh, community oracle. We need to uh, build a community around the inner source projects. Mm. But what kind of uh, community we want to build? Uh, how can I convince my colleague to join the community? So it, 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 it's taken me um, uh, about uh, half a year to, to realize uh, we're actually building a community of practice. Uh, here, I, I'd like to share the book of uh, Athena Winger's uh, cultivating community of practice. In my opinion, uh, the greatest uh, attraction of the open source community is that it's really on the internet to establish an effective system of knowledge sharing uh, and creation um, <clears throat> so that we can collaborate uh, effectively and uh, each of us can, can do the innovations on the back. Uh, um, on the top of others and uh, merge the individual um, knowledge into collective uh, wisdom. Uh, community of practice uh, is uh, groups of people who share a concern, a set of problems, or a passion about a topic and who deepen their knowledge and expertise in this area. Uh, by interacting on an uh, ongoing base. So um, the community of practice are uh, composed of three uh, parts, uh, domain, uh, the practice, and the community that bring people together. Uh, I will um, expand the domain and the practice later. Um, the value of uh, community of practice in organization um, um, helped us a lot. Um, in order to build an inner source community uh, within an uh, organization, we need to uh, find uh, some value point to address the relative uh, stakeholders. Um, and for me, it, it is to convince my uh, colleagues to join. And uh, uh, we also, uh, the value of the community of practice uh, has given us a, a lot of insights. And uh, I think, uh, three values are uh, um, applicable um, to the inner source community. Uh, many times, information barriers lead to uh, duplicated work uh, across uh, departments. Uh, community of practices uh, helps, uh, uh, helps us to break uh, down the organization's uh, boundary and uh, connect the local uh, pocket, uh, pocket uh, experts and uh, isolated uh, professional uh, cross department. With help of a community of practice, we can share these common knowledges. We can use a uh, uh, cross team, uh, share uh, approach and solve the uh, 
um, repetitive um, business programs. In this way, the business value of the uh, community of practice uh, is reflected. And uh, in this way, we can easily um, get help from uh, inside of the organization. Uh, finally, uh, the community of practice uh, links everyone's career uh, development, development to the company's uh, strategy. And the knowledge of the community provides a place for everyone to continue uh, recharge, recharge themselves. And uh, uh, at the same time, it provides a, a guarantee of the talent resources for the company's uh, strategic strat strat uh, layout. Uh, through the practice uh, activity of the community of practice, uh, we can continue to deep, deepen our knowledge and understanding our professional uh, field. Um, so, so in this way, um, um, I, I just like realized uh, InnoSource uh, is not only um, help us to uh, uh, um, develop the, the InnoSource project. We, we are also um, um, built a community of practice. Um, what we learned from the InnoSource 1.0, um, we sum summarized uh, these five key points. And uh, after talking to the people who get involved in the InnoSource 1.0, and we try to address things in our InnoSource 2.0, and I will explain them one by one. Uh, one is the knowledge uh, sharing. In the InnoSource 1.0, we only think about uh, the code and uh, don't share background or knowledge uh, about the code, uh, such as the readme file is too simple as a book without any words. Uh, so we start a template uh, project to help the InnoSource project to uh, set up. Um, we also provide a how to document uh, in the project uh, Wikipedia uh, uh, page. And uh, as this template project is using AI, many InnoSource projects, uh, so we run it as an InnoSource project now. And uh, now we uh, use the issue to check the InnoSource related questions and kept updating the how to document based on the feedback and encourage others to send uh, merge requests if they find any uh, errors and or if they have any good ideas. Uh, by sharing the knowledge, we can allow the barrier um, for people to join. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, people over the tools. Uh, in source 1.0, we built our social code platform, which is uh, based on the GitLab. Uh, anyone can um, create a Git repository um, in this platform, uh, but uh, but we we uh, it looks like they can uh, do the work by themselves. But uh, uh, um, but few people are uh, are collaborative in, in, in that way. So we um, we only provide the training session uh, for the Git, and uh, but uh, um, we don't know how to use this tool in open source way. Uh, now we run an open access project to provide a uh, community portal uh, service, which includes a mail list, uh, GitLab API, and uh, a wiki, and uh, the linking, uh, uh, WeLink. WeLink is the uh, uh, internal, uh, uh, is the instance uh, management system we use inside of the company. Um, we are uh, encouraging people to in interact and share ideas, uh, code, or documentations. Uh, we are working together virtually. Um, this service, uh, service helps people to uh, build uh, a social fabric of learning um, and uh, which uh, could include the people to um, want to uh, learn or share and uh, engage uh, on others. Um, so that's bring back to the community of practice uh, dom domain. Uh, domain uh, bring people uh, together to uh, discuss the topics uh, for mutual uh, interest, uh, learn from each other and grow together. Domain uh, makes everyone act uh, ac actions valuable. Uh, domain creates a sense of uh, uh, commonality. Uh, common domain inspires a sense of responsibility of knowledge and uh, develop practices. 
uh, funding a domain, uh, that we are all care about uh, make it easier to uh, build a community of practice. Uh, in old day, I I used to think about uh, the uh, we built a community around the project, uh, but uh, um, but but recently we find some interesting things. Uh, it's not easiest for us to uh, build the community uh, around the inner source project because the project uh, areas could could not be very popular. But it's much easier for us to find a common domain that most of the people uh, are interested about. So, so um, by uh, by thinking that way, I, 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 we try to uh, we find out uh, uh, there's uh, some um, common um, technical uh, related uh, domain. We can gather the people together by by gather them together. We 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 can we can build uh, the the inner source project more easily. And and the most important thing is. Uh, 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 we we need to bring people together. Uh, currently, we are setting up the SGI on uh, uh, SIG on certain tech technology and attract uh, more people. Uh, the third one is uh, collaboration over sharing. It's easy uh, if we just open up a, a development code and share uh, the, the 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 knowledge, but it take time and efforts to bring a contributor uh, on board. Uh, we need to give them some good reason to join the project, uh, lower the, the barriers of contribution, and help the newbie to understand the context of a project through the code reviewing. Um, people um, um, uh, in open source world, um, people are managing code through the Git, uh, uh, discussion issues through the mailing list uh, and Jira or, or GitHub issues, uh, and do the code re reviewing um, and, and pass the knowledge about the the, the code development and the wiki page uh, and use wiki to share documentation. Uh, this practice uh, ba uh, based on these tools uh, allow the participate um, uh, participants uh, to share their knowledge uh, while interact with each other uh, to spark new ideas through the practice uh, through the practices uh, to continue to uh, deepen their knowledge and uh, understanding uh, um, the sp uh, specific key, uh, areas related to the um, projects and uh, um, thus enhance their um, professional um, capabilities. In the source common uh, learning parts is a, a good example. It's not only provide uh, learning materials for in source, but it's also provides a good place for people uh, to learn how to work together. Uh, we have the discussion uh, about the translation terms and uh, uh, practice the code review process by publishing the documentations. Uh, when, we, uh, when, I asked, uh, I, when I was asked about how to get real experience of the open source uh, from a colleague, uh, I highly recommend them to participate in uh, this kind of project uh, by doing some translation or reviewing tasks. Uh, the first is top down and uh, bottom up. Uh, as seen, uh, why past open organization folks said, uh, there's a lot of difference between uh, the conventional uh, organization and open organization. Uh, in the big company, it's uh, straightforward to send uh, commands uh, through a hierarchy system. But in the open source community, people are more uh, self organized, they are self motivated to do things what they are uh, wanted to do. Even uh, we got support from the highly uh, higher uh, management team level, we still need to follow the rules of the open source community to get uh, them passionate about the project. So uh, we believe that a most effective, uh, if a most efficient and effective solution is to empower the people who are uh, capable to get things done. Uh, now we set up an um, internal inner source uh, foundation uh, to provide the infrastructure uh, facilities and uh, a project governance, uh, which are in, inspired by up to the software foundation uh, to, to build the uh, collaborative uh, culture. 
open source uh, a inner source foundation uh, can get the top top down uh, permissive component from the senior uh, staff and promote a bottom up uh, tangible projects and the workflow for people to engage with. Uh, the fifth uh, community health uh, health first. Uh, it's easy to get uh, some up for the inner source project uh, if we ask how uh, uh, a fever from our colleagues. Uh, uh, we may happy about the number, but it doesn't bring any. Uh, and the, if it doesn't bring and the real interactions uh, of the collaborations, uh, we need to think with uh, traps. Uh, we need to think about the metrics and that can bring a uh, real uh, sustainability uh, to the inner source projects. And now we are using uh, inner source maturity model uh, from the uh, inner source pattern. And it's uh, uh, a very useful tool to help, to help us to set up a common understanding of the, uh, in, in, uh, how, how good in the inner source project should be like. And we can monitor the project status uh, from transparency, uh, collaboration, and uh, community health and uh, uh, governance level. Uh, and uh, um, by answering some questions, um, uh, the, the project can do some self uh, assessment. And uh, uh, as a mentor, uh, we review the, the, the assessment and uh, try to give them a uh, direction and for them to improve and uh, set up the goals for our inner source projects. Uh, to summarize the, this presentation, uh, we have uh, three takeaways. Uh, one is uh, inner source is learned from the open source world. So if, uh, if we want to uh, build up uh, inner source culture um, inside of the company, we, we need to uh, or uh, we need to get more people to know about open source first. And uh, community over the code uh, is the concept of our inner source 2.0. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are still trying to build a community around the project. And uh, uh, the last one is uh, community of practice uh, give us a key. And uh, now um, with, with, um, by, by thinking, um, if we pay more attention uh, by sharing knowledge, it, it will uh, give us uh, a good, uh, a very good reasons for the people to join, especially uh, for the um, and uh, the middle management could see the benefit uh, if um, if we uh, can let more people to uh, if we can build the community of practice inside of the organization. Uh, um, okay, uh, that is what I. Want to share with you guys, and uh, you can get touch with. Uh, here's my uh, Twitter and uh, email, and uh, you can get touch with me. And uh, if you have any questions uh, or, or or interesting topic, uh, want to talk.